In 2005, the fifth Labour government decided to eliminate charges, all interest charges of student loans for borrowers resident in New Zealand. This became known as the Interest-Free Student Loan Scheme. At the time, it was criticised heavily by the opposition, but it was very welcomed by both students and their families. But for, from a more critical perspective, how wise a decision was it, either politically or economically speaking? Ten years on, and the nominal value of the student loan asset stands at $15 billion. But the total value of the interest write-offs stand at $6 billion, or almost $6 billion. So that's $6 billion that comes at the expense of all Kiwi taxpayers, wealthy or poor alike, and regardless of whether or not they've benefited from tertiary education themselves. And to what effect? Well, 10 years on, and tertiary participation rates haven't really improved. Neither have the median loan repayment times improved. They're still seven years today, and they were about seven years back in 2005. And what's worse is that there is no evidence, or very little evidence that we can find, of the interest-free student loan scheme having improved tertiary participation among poorer cohorts, or having improved educational equity. And overseas-based borrowers still remain a bit of a delicate issue. Of the total $15 billion, overseas-based borrowers owe just over $3 billion of that, and $800 million of that $3 billion is overdue. So what are some possible solutions? As contentious as it is, we recommend restoring a market-based interest rate on student loans. You could grandfather existing loans because they're protected by the contracts you could introduce a market interest rate in, say, about five years' time. This could then free up some extra revenue which could be put towards better targeted assistance. You could, say, use the financial revenue or financial um, freed, freed up revenue to fund programs aimed at, at a secondary school level aimed at improving academic performance and tertiary education preparation. Another idea is that you could share the default risk between both universities and students to boost academic performance and ensure that the highest quality tertiary education is provided. Another idea is to offer private loans for wealthy students. Whatever the case, there is no compelling public policy case for interest-free student loans, and we think that both students and taxpayers deserve much better.